All right, so we're starting chapter two here in the same unit, and this lesson's all about relations and functions. So uh, before we go on, though, I do have to apologize if I get too close to the camera. You're gonna you know, see my my uh, sun tan, sun tan, my sun burn peeling, so I kind of look like a leper. And then uh, I didn't have time to shave either. So anyway. Here we go, this is your teacher. Um, so we got four objectives here, a lot of stuff in this lesson, a lot of foundational stuff. So number one, finding the domain and the range of relations and functions, domains and range, inputs and outputs. Um, maybe I give you a graph, maybe I give you an equation, table, whatever, being able to list domain and range. Ob objective two, being able to determine if a relation is a function or not. Number three, being able to classify and evaluate function. I tell you to put something in. What do you get out? What kind of function is it? And then finally, number four, and tell me the difference between be able to distinguish between what's called a continuous function and a discrete function. All right, so let's get started right here. Look at some vocabulary. Here are some terms. Maybe you've seen these before in algebra one, maybe even geometry, maybe even a science class. We've got relation and function. Function is a very, um, very important concept in all of mathematics. So much of high school mathematics is based all around functions. So it's a good, good thing to have a, a grasp on what the heck that thing is. You have your inputs and your outputs, what you can put in, what comes out as a result, the domain and the range. They're also inputs and outputs. Independent variable and dependent variable, which you probably talk about in science. Again, what you put in, what you get to come out. All right, so here's our first objective. First objective, being able to find the domain and the range of a relation. This part's just a relation, then we'll look at it again as a function. Okay, so anyway, uh, in the picture, you got penguins. It's a beautiful, beautiful picture of some penguins, and, and the penguins are paired up, and I think that there are certain pe penguins that mate for life. You, you find yourself a mate, and you're with them for good, right? And that's what a, a function or a relation is doing, is that you're pairing two things up. You're pairing up an input and an output. It's like with these uh, lovely penguins. Okay, so what a relation is in math, a relation is just a pairing up of inputs and outputs. I take this number and I pair it up with that number. That's it, that's all a relation is. Some kind of way that I can pair up two numbers. And uh, I could, if you look at the bottom of the screen here, here's, here's some multiple representations of how I could see a relation. I could pair them up as ordered pairs so that I'd have an input of negative 2 and an output of positive 2. An input of negative 2 or an output of negative 2, and so on. I could see it as a table, inputs and outputs, x's and y's. I could see it on a graph where I have my inputs on the x-axis, my outputs on the y-axis. Or this uh, lovely um, mapping diagram. Again, it's saying here are the inputs. I'm going to pair them up with those outputs here. And as far as a relation goes, there's no there's no rule on how you have to pair things up. You just pair them up, okay? And how they are paired up is whatever it is that you write down in your ordered pairs, your table, your graph, or whatever it might be, okay? So, what's the domain and the range of each of these relations? Well. You have to know what the heck domain and the range actually means, right? Yeah, we're going to have to uh, talk about what those things are. Domain means all the stuff that you get to input, range, all the stuff that gets to come out. So we will get there. So right here, those are those two vocabulary words, the domain and the range. So think of the domain, your set of all your input values, what you get to put into the relation and then the range are all of your output values. These are just two sets of numbers. And the relation Oh my gosh, I think I think it might be raining. Um, anyway, the relation is just linking those two things together. It's the thing that pairs up a domain, an input with a range, an output. And you know domain is usually an x value and a range is usually a y value. And all of these things for the domain, they're, they're linked al alphabetically. It just kind of happened by chance, but it's, it's a good thing for you because domain comes before range 
x comes before y and input comes before output. It's very easy to remember uh, if you think of it in alphabetical order like that. Okay, so consider this relation given by all these ordered pairs, blah, 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 blah. Identify the domain and the range. Okay, it should be a piece of cake. And all we're going to do is list these things out and uh, put them in a, like a set, uh, set builder or curly brackets, right? Okay, so my domain, I'll just make it a D and uh, open up a J Leno and just list out all of uh, your domain numbers, all your X values, all your inputs. And I don't really care what order you put them in. Sure, some people like to have them in least to greatest, whatever. If they occur more than once, do you have to write it? No. All right, so let's just go with each one of these ordered pairs. I got a three for an input, a negative one, I got a two, I got a negative two, and I've got a zero, right? I don't have any duplicates. Sure, I could have gone like this, negative two, negative one, that looks like a seven. That still looks like, a, I don't know what that, where's my eraser? Here we go. All right, negative one, a zero, and what, I have a two and a three. You could put it in that order. Again, honestly, it doesn't matter. Range, I want to list out all of my Y values, all my outputs. So, I got my a two from the first one, I got a zero from the second one, a negative one, a positive one, and then a three. That's it. There's, there's no, uh, there's no complication to that whatsoever. All right. Uh, on the same set of ordered pairs, represent this as a graph and a mapping diagram. Why don't I go ahead and allow you some time to do that? So why don't you pause the video and see if you can just draw yourself a graph for it draw yourself a mapping diagram, the, the little circles that have inputs over here, outputs, and then you connect them with arrows. Give that a try, huh? Thanks. All right, that was pretty simple, right? So here were the answers that I came up with. And uh, there you go, just whenever I make a graph, a graph is like a more visual way to look at all of your data that's in your, your relation, whatever. It's just another way to look at it. Sometimes it's more helpful than the, the list of ordered pairs, especially if I'm looking for some sort of pattern that might be, um, that might relate those two things together. Inputs and outputs with the, with the mapping diagram. I did put them in order from least to greatest just because I felt like it. There you go. It looks real nice. Okay.